Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for joining us. In today's video, I want to talk about a subject that many people have asked different questions about and it is a very common struggle in the Christian walk. So I wanna talk about some advice that has really helped me and I really hope it can help you as well. So we are going to be talking about what to do when we feel distant from God or we feel that the world is pulling us away from Him. So what I thought of right now is there are three kind of different ways and scenarios, if you wanna word it, to feeling distant from God. So the first one would be the one where we feel distant from God's love. Number two, we cannot understand his word and feel he isn't speaking. Number three, the world is having a pull on us. So we're really facing temptation or we're really looking at the world and just trying to still conform to our old ways when we know, no, that's not who I am. I died to self a very long time ago to serve God. I have been through these many, many times and I'm pretty sure many of you can relate. So I really pray and hope that this video can help some of you. So number one is we feel distant from God's love and also his presence. So my first piece of advice for this, and I honestly cannot even stress this enough, and I'm trying to apply this in my own personal life as well, so it's a current struggle for me at the moment. It's relationship over religion. We always say, oh, Christianity is a relationship, it's not a religion. But how many of us actually apply that into our daily lives? How many of us are working at our relationship with God. It always seems like we're just sticking to the religion part of it and not even trying to communicate with God or reach him and read his word and all of that good stuff. The majority of us are too busy volunteering at a church. We're too busy trying to memorize his word rather than reading it, memorizing it, and applying it to our life. We are too busy all of the time. God does not tell us to do all of this stuff, or I think busybody is the right word. He's not calling us to do that. He doesn't care if you don't serve in a church or participate in it. As long as you are communicating with him and continuing and pursuing your relationship with God, it doesn't matter if you do all of that stuff. It isn't wrong if you are doing that stuff, but we just have to remember to keep a balance. So we need to have God and our other stuff, but God has to come first. I got slightly sidetracked there. So honestly, we would be shocked of how much God would actually speak to us and reveal himself to us if we actually took the time to sit down and seek him. So the first thing that I really encourage all of us to do, and I love doing this, but I haven't been doing it lately, so I'm also kind of distant myself. But the thing we should be doing is sitting quietly, get alone quietly, just sit there and seek his presence. We need to remember how Satan works. We have an enemy that we always have to keep an eye out for. We need to know that he will cause boredom, he will cause anxiety or frustration or make us feel annoyed, so we just have to be aware of that. If you start feeling bored, just tell him goodbye, like nobody has time for you. Yeah, so specifically put away all distractions, sit quietly and ask God to reveal his love to you and he surely will. Maybe not at that moment, but he still hears you and he is enjoying that one-on-one -on -one time with you and he will for sure reveal his love to you in many, many different ways. So during that quiet time with God, I really encourage all of you to tell God exactly how you feel. This is what always brings so much comfort to my soul. All of us act like bottles. We keep every single thought, emotion, everything inside and we don't let it out. But we need to remember, and this blows my mind, God already knows. Why are we afraid to tell God certain things or talk to him about certain things when he already knows? He already sees every single thing inside of our heart, but he wants you to talk to him about it. I know most of you or some of you are thinking, well, why do you have to tell your all-powerful, all-knowing God what he already knows? But that's the beauty of God. He wants to give us a chance to know him. So that is why we should take that initiative to actually try and seek him because he's amazing. So just tell him all of it. Tell him everything that's on your heart and spill it out. Honestly, I've done this at night sometimes and you wake up the next morning feeling a little bit lighter and you actually feel better. So I really encourage you to do that as well. So even be honest with God. Honesty is key. So tell him, you know what, God, I don't believe in you this week. 
You're, I'm really doubting you. Just tell him all of that stuff and he will help you. Ask him to help you overcome this trial with victory and ask him to help you trust in him and believe in him on a much more deeper level. Number two is about reading his word. I have a few videos about Bible reading, so I'll link them down below in the description box. So hopefully they can be of some help to you. So we must never forget to read his word. He is always with us and I don't think we can comprehend that. I actually got a huge reminder from a movie I watched last night and it said, we always uh, make God so small. We think he's just in the Bible or we think he's on his throne in heaven, but he is everywhere. We need to remember how important it is to read his word and know his word and believe it in our heart because that is our shield against the fiery darts of the enemy. Just like when the enemy tempted Jesus three times, what did Jesus do to fight back? He spoke the word of God to him and said, no, this is the truth. This is what it is. So I will not fall for your lies. Jesus set an ultimate example for us, not just by his um, sacrifice to us, but also the way he lived his life. Even when his word is sometimes hard to understand, we need to keep pushing forward. And we must remember that he wants to speak to you. Keep pressing into God about these things. Tell him that you cannot feel his love. Tell him that you are having a hard time understanding his word. I even got frustrated at God before because I'm like, what's the point of reading this when I don't understand it? But I take those words back 100% because remember what Jesus said, to those who ask, it shall be given and to those who knock, it shall be opened unto you. And this is talking about things such as understanding and wisdom. He will reveal these things to you. Sometimes it's not instantly, but it's when he sees the time is right. And another key thing is we need to work with God instead of against him. So number three is my favorite one to talk about and that is the world. What do we do when we feel serious temptation or we feel like we um, prefer the things of the world rather than the things of God. So I want to read Galatians 2 verse 20, which says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. We are bought with a price, so it is no longer us who live, but it is Christ who lives in us. So we should be dying to self daily. So this one is huge, it is everything, and this is the main one of the main reasons that we become distant from God. So when the world tries to steal our attention, that is the enemy's lies. Do not believe so it. So the longer, the more, the deeper we walk with God, he will reveal the things of the world versus the things of him to us. If we believe in Jesus as our savior, we have authority in his name to overcome the lies of the enemy. So another quick thing I wanna add in is, this is one of the top reasons why people turn away from God and decide, forget it, I don't wanna walk like this anymore. And that is when we start to believe that God is distant and we feel like we are always doing something wrong. And that is Satan's condemnation. Cause I used to go through this a lot. I struggled with that for a long time. I would be doing nothing particularly wrong or um, full out doing a certain sin, but I always felt like I was doing something wrong and I felt condemned all the time. My friend, we must learn the difference between a Holy Spirit conviction or Satan's condemnation. So Satan's ultimate goal is to push us extremely far from God. You are loved and that is a fact. Focus on what Jesus did for you rather than what you are feeling. Unless it is a conviction from the Holy Spirit, then we must listen to that and act on it. The enemy will do absolutely anything it takes to make us distant from God and to make us lose faith. So stay strong and keep fighting that good fight. Let's read James 4 verse 7 and 8. It says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. I absolutely love that verse. So I really want you guys to ponder that verse and think about it, memorize it. But we need to remember also that nothing in this world is better than God's love. If you're still here, please hang in there. We're almost done. We're just going to read a few more verses. So we're going to read 1 John 2, verse 15 and 17 next, which says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth, 
forever. God not only just commands us to not love the things in this world, but he does it for our protection, to help us avoid temptation and to help us walk righteously. The world and the lust thereof, so everything we see around us that we think matters so much, it is passing away. But those who do the will of the Father will abide forever. And what is the will of the Father? For us to believe in the one he sent, his son, what he did for us, and to walk righteously. And of course, for us to experience his love and for us to know him and have that relationship with him. So I want to read Proverbs 8 verse 13, which says, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance, and the evil way, and the froward mouth do I hate. That is why it is so important to remember the word of God, because whenever we face a temptation, a certain trial, any season in life, we will remember the word of God and speak it to our situation. We will not let our circumstance define us or our walk with God. We will tell our problem how big our God is. God wants and is making us people who are strong, people who will not be moved when the storms of life hit, but will rather take refuge in him. No matter how bad the temptation gets, he needs you to be strong. Galatians 5 1 says, Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Just because we were born into the sinful nature, that does not mean that we have to remain that way. We cannot use grace as a reason to continue living a life that God came to free us from. If you want to be free, you will be free. Romans 6 verse 1 and 2 says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Jesus came to set you free. You are no longer a slave to sin, but you are a child of God. Start walking in that way. Grow your faith. Keep improving. It is never too late to give your life to Jesus, and that is the best choice we could ever make. I have no idea where that came from. That just kind of flowed out of me naturally. What I meant to say was, it is never too late to make a change to your life and start living by God's word and reading him and getting to know him. But in all seriousness though, there is only one way and that is Jesus. That's it for this video. I really hope that it could be helpful. Remember to never ever give up. You are a child of God, so start living in it. I love you all so much and I'll see you next time.